Welcome to the Indigo League, where trainers grow and bond with their Pokemon to become the very best and prove themselves unbeatable. We are unbeatable, we'll train until we meet our goal. If stakes are high, no, we won't fall because we are unbeatable. Last time on Unbeatable. If a horse could yell, come at me, bro. If a seahorse could yell that, that's what this Pokemon <laughs> would look like. It's got two mono wounds left. I'm going to try and catch it. Okay. Horsey, you're all mine. Do we know the name of this gym leader? You would know the name of it. This would be gym leader Brand. Normally, I don't get any visitors till like mid-May. Oh, we started up in Pallet. Yeah, and you didn't go the normal way towards Buter. We well, you know, it's yeah. such a tourist trap. <laughs> Well, none of you are going to be able to challenge till you do the uh, trial. So what I'm going to have you do is on the far side of the island, there's a, uh, I'm going to have Sally Seven take a flag and, and like, plant it in the, yeah, in the cave. You just got to get to the cave and get it back before sundown. Corinne grabs everyone's arms. And run. <laughs> yeah, you just go. He just, just run. Starts going. Welcome to not quite the world of Pokemon, actually. Uh, so, just getting into it. Hi, I'm Aaron, your professor and local game master for the Unbeatable Podcast. Uh, and I just want to let you know that episode 22 actually ended up having a major recording error. And by major recording error. I mean that we lost all audio regarding the professor in the episode uh, that would have come out this week uh, for Unbeatable, which is a bit of a bummer. So don't worry, we're still going to get across everything that happened this episode and do our best, but because um, we could have very easily scrapped this episode and decided to just skip it and uh, be like, ah, we'll pick it up later. But we decided that uh, we liked the, what happened this episode too much to let everything go to waste. So I, your professor, will be doing my best rendition uh, based off of my notes of what happened in episode 22 of Unbeatable, A Canto Journey. Now, I have a lot of notes here, uh, and you'll have to bear with me because it's going to be it's, it, it's gonna be a little bit freeform. There's going to be some clips from the audio that we still have from the episode. Um, there's going to be a little bit of visual aids. But uh, let's get into it. Uh, so, in episode 22, we actually pick up right where we left off in episode 21 with all four members of our party uh, leaving Brand, the Cinnabar Island gym leader's shack and headed off into the woods on a timed trial, trying to get to the western side of the island of Cinnabar to uh, grab a flag. The, basically, that's the whole thing. It's a... Uh, it's a, it's a it's a fetch quest is basically this entire uh, episode. So essentially the players are going to have to make it from basically the east side of the island all the way over to the west side of the island within a few short hours. I believe they had a four hour time limit. Um, They're going to be doing what's called a traditional hex crawl. So we actually made a whole game out of crossing the island, which you will see more of in future episodes. Don't worry. The spoiler alert. I'm from in the future. So there will be more of those mechanics. But uh, we made a little bit of a game out of crossing the island. So essentially, each hex that the players move towards their goal, they have to roll an encounter die. If they roll low enough, there will be an encounter for that hex. And every hex that they don't encounter something, their chances of encountering something else in the next hex go up. Um, immediately, just out the gate, immediately, the players roll an environmental encounter in the form of the volcanic island of Cinnabar. Uh erupting just a little bit and sending a soot cloud their way um just toxic smoke and dust clouds covering them all and they actually solved it in a pretty creative way um pull out buoy and i'm just going to uh bring him out on my shoulder uh and i'm going to tell him to uh shoot a water gun out in front of us but when he goes to shoot it i'm going to close his mouth so it shoots like a mister and just pss, and sprays out so it can try and collect as much soot as it can and like coagulate it down to lower the chance of it just catching our eye and like getting in our way. Let me know if this is possible. So Beatrix rules. is a bee drill and their their insect wings flap pretty fast. Can they can Beatrix fly kind of near buoy and above so that when it turns to mist the wings can like disperse it like out? Horsey, who I still haven't named, is um uh has twister. After traveling through that cloud, luckily, they go 
several hexes without actually running into anything else. And they actually do, their next encounters are some of the good encounters that they can run into uh, while they're on Cinnabar. So for example, the first thing they run into is a uh, an orinberry bush where they each manage to grab two different orinberries uh, and they, they kind of use that to restock their pouches. Now they do over the course of this trip run into several other good encounters and just for posterity's sake, here's some of the other things they pick up along the way. Um, they come to a burnt section of the island where uh, one of them gathers a piece of charcoal, which is a fire type empowering held item. Uh, they actually find a fire stone, which can evolve certain fire types. Uh, and they find a rostberry uh, bush. So those berries will help them avoid burns in the future. Uh, but those are just some of the good items that they pick up along the way. Now, they did run into several bad encounters, um, such as uh, a set of undergrowth and trees that delayed them so heavily that uh, Corinne debated using a certain powerful move. Can I, if I look at that tree wall with a hypothetical, do I think that a water spout could cut through that? <laughs> Let's save it. We gotta get back. Five, okay, wing, fine. Wing attack that. <laughs> we'll skip it for now. Now, along the way across the island, they were making regular fortitude checks to make sure that they wouldn't have to take breaks because they're running several miles at this point in time. Uh, and they're going for, you know, hours on end. So I was trying to make sure that they got their rest when necessary. And eventually, every single member of the group failed their fortitude check at the same time, other than surprisingly, Seth Wake. Did you guys not prep for this? I feel How like you guys were- How do you way. prep? How do you prep for this? Okay, well, I mean, we gotta go. Very dangerous over short distances. The sweat evaporates, that's what happens, right? You're so that's full of happens. shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. We gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. I'm gonna I'm throw up my stomach. <laughs> start picking everybody up. Start pushing them. But besides uh, avoiding encountering a few uh, powerful Pokemon on the island, such as some Magmar, uh, getting all of their, their their good stuff out of the way, like all of their berries, and then running into their environmental encounters, there actually wasn't as much uh, conflict crossing the island as I thought there would be. And they actually make it to the west side of the island fairly quickly. Um, once they get there, they do discover the cave that Brand had told them to enter uh, that they find out used to be a hotel. Though Seth did roll very low to try and identify that. Guys, this used to be a building. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm noticing this for the first you time. See, Glad you, I made this discovery. You see <laughs> Corinne <laughs> like in a wide <laughs> shot behind Seth just shaking her head. <laughs> So the group actually ends up going into the uh, hotel itself, headed through the lobby, and Seth makes a beeline to find the additional item, a Team Rocket coaster. Because uh, if you'll recall, Brand gave them an additional mission on uh, on this to try and find a coaster, and he'd give them extra prizes uh, if they could, in fact, find it. Now, uh, he does not find it, unfortunately, at the concierge desk where he was looking, but he does find a set of keys that might come up later. Also, during this time, uh, Gavin does end up grabbing the flag that Brand had had uh, Sally Seven, his Charizard, placed there earlier that day. So they do have their main objective at this point. Clearly. I am going to go to this concierge desk where the Team Rocket have their team bonding exercises, uh, and I'm going to look for a coaster. Can I look on those um, rack of keys to see if there's any like service keys uh, for anything that might be like below where we are? Yoink. Hey guys, grab that key. We gotta uh, grab that uh, flag thing. We gotta uh, get back, but I gotta look for that coaster and I'll start running downstairs. And even though they have their main objective, the group still does decide to head down the set of basement stairs, the only staircase available from this lobby, uh, to keep searching for that coaster, that additional objective that they're trying to find. Now all the players do end up splitting up and going through several hotel rooms that have been long abandoned for several decades at this point. Uh, Corinne, in her room, ends up Finding the rocket coaster, finding the little, you know, drink coaster with just some branding on it. Uh, Gavin ends up finding an old notebook belonging to a mysterious Pokemon collector. Uh, and any of you who may have seen certain Pokemon films may uh, may be aware of who this character is. Don't worry, this is not spoilers for the players. These are things that they deduced on their own during the game. But Seth ends up finding a secret set of stairs. Cool. Uh, guys, found more stairs. Uh, I'm just in this door that's been kicked down. I'm going down it now. Wait, wait, uh, wait, keep wait. looking for the coaster. Wait, no, wait. I have the coaster. S Seth. I know. We're on a time crunch. 
We have to go. We can always come back. <laughs> now, the group does disagree about going down the stairs, but eventually Seth convinces them when he realizes that the tunnel goes back towards Brand's shack, actually. That's where we that need to go. The right, that is the right. Guys, right. there's a path here. It looks like it, it's a tunnel that takes us right over to it. Can I take this map? Take a picture of mm -hmm. it. Take a picture uh, of it. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm going to. I'm going to roll a technology check. Try to take a picture of it. If that doesn't work, I'm going to take the picture physically. Oh my god. Um, so I take the picture off the wall <laughs> uh, physically. <laughs> they end up walking for a very long time, uh, creeping through the darkness and seeing a bunch of empty rooms. But eventually, they send their pal Vermilion's Scyther Gerber forward to scout for them, and that's going to be important later. At this point, as the group is walking, they are walking for miles. They realize that this tunnel goes a very long way down the island. And uh, eventually, Seth gets a, a little curious and lets his curiosity get the better of him. And he takes those keys that he found at the concierge desk and unlocks just a few of the rooms as they go by. Uh, a little bit of foreshadowing here. That was maybe not the best choice. Uh, th those keys I have don't fit into those, do they? Does it look like- Are they locked? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll stop for a second and just to check. I'm not opening and going into the room. I'm just looking to like, you know how you just fit a key in to see if it, oh nice, chikum, chikum. open those doors. We'll come back later. <laughs> I have no idea what I wrote here. What the, f what does that say? I don't, I genuine. I genuinely have no idea what this word is. So we're just gonna keep going. Uh, it's at this point though, that Gerber returns from scouting, telling the group that uh, their only exit, one that Seth had found on a map earlier, uh, is actually blocked by a slab of stone. Now, they're very confident in themselves and decide to continue onward, even though they could potentially be blocked down here. They think that they can cut through that stone at some point. Now, they end up having this conversation with Gerber, but it's at this point that they begin to hear noises behind them. We find out that the rooms that Seth unlocked just a little bit ago were not empty down in this dark, unlit tunnel. Uh, they actually had quite a few muck sitting within them. So the group, being much smarter than they should have any right to be, immediately start running away uh, when they realize that muck are in fact pursuing them through the tunnel. Can I? Why did you open the doors? Why did you open the doors? Page. Why did you open the doors? <laughs> Adventure, guys. No! <laughs> As they run, the group does find another locked room that Seth unlocks and they decide to take refuge in. It is only when they enter this room that they realize that it still has electricity, which is weird given that this base has been abandoned for 20 something odd years. Now, inside this room, the electricity is feeding two clear vats, each containing a gelatinous Pokemon, a ditto. Now, at this point, they slam the doors shut um, and turn to look at the dittos when they realize that now they are basically gonna be trapped in here with these dittos and the mucks outside the room. And that is where we end episode 22 of Unbeatable. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I know it's a really short episode and I just wanted to tell you what had happened in episode 22 because we liked this episode so much that we didn't want to redo it. You know, we want we always want our uh, experiences to be genuine when it comes to Unbeatable. We don't like retaking things. We don't like scripting things. That's not what we do. So we could have very easily just said, fuck it. We'll just go to episode 23 and kind of hand wave what happened but I wanted to at least try and give you guys something. So anyway, thank you guys for joining us on this week's episode of Unbeatable. We'll be back as regular next week. Um, and uh, don't forget to check out our Patreon. Uh, our patrons actually knew that we were having issues a lot earlier than a lot of YouTube people did. So uh, we just wanna say thank you to all our patrons. We, we really could not do any of this without you. Uh, if you wanna get early episodes and stuff, go check out our Patreon. Anyway, bye. Train until I meet my goal If stakes are high, no, I won't fall Because I am unbeatable Earning every badge, whatever it takes I'm gonna be the best trainer, you just wait And I know the road ahead looks like it won't be easy I am unbeatable Standing by my side, got my friends with me To explore a whole world of possibilities But no matter what the challenge is We can overcome it together Because we are unbeatable We'll train until we meet our goal The stakes are high, no we won't fall Because we are unbeatable We are unbeatable We'll train until we meet our goal
meet our goal. If stakes are high, no, we won't fall because we are unbeatable.